Welcome everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Builds and today we're dealing with the 2015 Polaris RZR XP 1000 EPS. Bit of an elongated name there. Uh, but yeah, it has a 330 horsepower, 195 pounds feet of torque, 1.2 litre turbocharged twin cylinder engine and the car itself weighs 1,496 pounds. It can do 0 to 60 in 4.888 seconds and 0 to 100 in 8.383 seconds and do 130 mile an hour, which is a lot faster than it was originally because for whatever reason it only had one gear. But yeah, it also has, f it might well weigh a bit more than it did originally, but it has f three times the horsepower, so it more than makes up for it. Now it's off road tyres, but it already had all wheel drive and it already had off road suspension. And if you've seen the car before, you'll know. Yeah couldn't really improve upon that with an upgrade so uh, yeah this uh, should do okay yes it weighs not all that much but it's got a high ride height it's got that off-road suspension got those off-road tires got all-wheel drive standard and 330 horsepower out of a car that doesn't even weigh 1500 pounds is pretty decent obviously it's not the most we've had but it's still a pretty decent amount of power nonetheless so uh, yeah let's see what it can do Quite a small little chubby car as well. Certainly not going to struggle with its size. But when I've been uh, racing this beforehand, it has had a tendency to roll over. over when it goes over a jump, sometimes does a uh, nose dive. That could be an issue. Hopefully, it isn't. Everything okay so far. How will it deal with water? Pretty decently. Like I said, it does have a high ride height, so it's got that up on uh, certain low riding supercars, etc. Other low riding cars in general, to be honest. That is the main Achilles heel of a lot of cars on this uh, series. It's the high, the uh, low ride heights. Did I miss that? Oh, I thought I did. Was it just about registered? Rocking and rolling a bit there. Somehow it stayed on the ground. Or oh, didn't crash after landing. all over the place. <laughs> Just getting thrown all over because it doesn't have all that much weight. But I held it and uh, it responded as well. So it loves to jump in here. So you can do way more uh, speed for the water than previous cars. Like those low sum cars that we've had, Ventador, etc. Damn it, I hate it when I do that. Clipping those fences really slow you down if you're going through all of it. Oh, come on. I'm not going to rewind it again, it's okay. So there we go. Pretty solid time, quite frankly, considering it's a car with only 330 horsepower and, uh, yeah, not all that much top speed. So yeah, 2 minutes 23.877 is ever so slightly behind the Warthog. If we didn't have that crash towards the end, we might well have beat it, but I don't like rewinding constantly on the same mistake. But yeah, it's ahead of the Aero Nomad, ahead of the Mayer's Manx, and obviously ahead of the Isetta and the uh, Supervan from Reliant. But it is obviously far, even though it does have the high ride height over the likes of the Aventador, it's still well behind it, because that car has so much power and so much better handling and uh, control that that car was just immensely quick for the kind of vehicle that it is but uh, yeah still a pretty decent time and uh, but yeah well off the lights of the Lumicraft class 10 which this car can be compared to because you can race the, the, the two of them together and uh, yeah the Toyota to FJ40 still reigns supreme at the top with 2 minutes 11.665 but yeah we'll definitely find a car that will beat that Toyota I'm sure of it uh, just unfortunately that this car wasn't that uh, wanted to uh, topple that Toyota Anyway, 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.